I sing perfect metre which will last until the end of the world. I know why there is an echo in a hollow. I know why breath is black, why liver bloody, and why silver shines. I tell stories I as um, a slightly tenuous living. I do my rehearsing out in the fields, you know, I could take off with the dog, or sometimes on my own, and uh, just to go off for long walks and go through the story, speaking it, thinking it. Um, I've had children running and hiding when they've seen me coming, thinking I'm a local maniac who goes gesticulating wildly and talking about rolling heads and um, the gutters running red with blood and all these terrible bloodthirsty images. I fell to the ground as a grain of wheat. I was pecked and swallowed by the black hen. For nine months in her crop I lay. I have been dead. I have been alive. I am Taliesin. Now once, and it wasn't my time, and it wasn't your time, but it was somebody's time, Jack and his two... I think it's important to, to tell stories to children because they are very much at the mercy of the media. We are bombarded by the visual. We live in a world where pictures are coming at us from all directions, and my feeling was that we are losing this capacity to make pictures in our heads the freedom to make pictures in our heads. And I like the way that story is individual to each child. And um, they perceive it and it means something to them and the pictures are very much their own, the pictures that they carry in their heads. When meat is cooked, then the real stories can begin. Wire bend. Story end. Well, Norfolk is very rich in churches. It's probably the most concentrated area of medieval churches in England and probably can't be many more concentrated areas in uh, Europe. I'm interested in them because of these little relics you get of folk belief in amongst the Christian iconography, almost as if it's been slipped in on the quiet, um, little echoes of an older religion and an older system. And the green man, of course, is an example of that. I think he's a powerful figure in the, the English imagination, the pre-Christian English imagination. Although he creeps into the churches, he's really a, a folk memory of a, of a pagan god. Many, many, many years ago, there lived a little peddler. I feel, when I tell a story, as though I'm just at the end of a chain of voices. It's part of this ongoing process of taking and making sense in your own time of something which has been shaped through generations. His little dog, who was as quick after a rat or a rabbit as any dog in Norfolk. There's a sort of concentration of human experience in those stories. They're not one person's creation, they've been shaped by generations, by hundreds of years. Even dreams can turn to gold. And that's the end of that story. I think what I get out of it is this sense of being part of a tradition, of part of this line of voices, and the moments when an audience is absolutely there. That's a tremendous excitement for me. In, in that sense, the sense of sort of oneness with an audience can be quite a religious experience. <laughs>